Well, what's, what's I find very interesting about this, and I was having this conversation earlier with Robin Dreek, uh, you know, former Marine, uh, chief of the counterintelligence behavioral analysis program, former FBI. And I said, you know, when it comes to like the world of spies, because that's where he was, in spy recruiting and all of that. Um, and you're you're trying to get information out of a foreign adversary or something of that nature. Um, they don't play by these sort of rules where let's, you know, let's torture, I mean, and put them in a small, I mean, yeah, I mean, we have seen things like that happen, like at Guantanamo Bay and things like that. And it was like, what the hell were you all doing? That doesn't, this is insane. Uh, by any stretch of the imagination or any professional standards, you don't do that because it doesn't produce accurate results. Exactly. That's what's shocking to me is is how we can in 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 one piece of our world and in one piece of um you know our, our government if you will when we're talking militarily they know it doesn't work you can't you can't coerce a confession that way you're not going to get any accurate information that way and if you're just someone a lay person hearing this story you go oh well that makes sense then we hear the story of Richard Allen and the exact same sort of things and conditions were happening to him. But somehow there are people expect different results of like, oh, yeah, well, if he killed those girls, you know, he's going to confess. He, you know, it's like this, this vitriolic, let's give it to the bad guy, even if he's not your bad guy. Um, but if he is the bad guy, he's really going to crack. And I guess he got somebody to crack, but I don't know it was because he's really the bad guy. Right, right. And and the irony of our, our prison system in many jails also is that when they want to keep someone safe, mm -hmm. they put them in a situation that is hellish. <laughs> yeah. And they'll, you know, the one of the jails I used to go into to evaluate people, they called it the safety cell. Mm -hmm. And the safety cell was basically a cold room with padded walls and a concrete floor with no mattress. They took their clothing away. Um, so there was no way they could hurt themselves. You know, when I looked at it, it looked like the torture cell to me, not the safety cell, but that's yeah. what it was called. So there's some irony there. And he certainly has not been in a situation conducive to his mental health. But for me, it's really about the symptoms, what was causing them, what um, what confession did he make at what point in time? Yeah. And were there things said when he was fairly symptom free and cogent? I would give more credence to those than things that he said that were of a very bizarre nature when he was eating feces. Yeah, that that. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it would be very, uh, very accurate. Um, just the idea that this is this is how our systems work. Do we need I mean. You don't have investigators in, in a prison all the time or a jail. Number one, he shouldn't have been in a prison. We have already covered that a gazillion times, but he was. Um, in a prison, you, you don't have your investigators. You don't have your attorneys there all the time. You oftentimes have your wardens that are right there. And, and I think sometimes just based on experience and stories, you have wardens that are, are almost wanting to play the role of investigator or playing the role of cop. And they're going to get that confession. They're going to get that information out of this guy that we we know what he's in here for, but he hasn't been convicted of anything. Is it something where we need, you know, better reforms there too in our prison system in terms of how we treat our prisoners um, in order to get information out of them if we want it? Because we seem to be going about it the exact opposite way of getting actual accurate information when we're trying to seek justice. Yeah, I, I, I think that topic of prison reform, oh my gosh, yeah, the whole the whole thing, the fact that you basically have to join a racist gang, you know, if you're black to survive, you join the black gang, yeah. if you're white, you join, you know, the other gang, yeah. and, and that you have to, have to, you know, be so aggressive, rather than anything related to rehabilitation. Yeah. And so there is from top to bottom, I think we have a mess and, and we need to do the whole thing differently. I don't see that happening in the current medical state, um, but it would be wonderful if we did do a better job. With, uh, with only uh, this bullet tying Richard Allen to the scene, uh, and, and it's questionable if it even ties into the scene, quite honestly. It was found after officers had uh, combed the scene, had been around, uh, the point was even made by Richard Allen's attorney that it's probably more likely that that single bullet that was found is more so from an officer accidentally dropping it while he was working the scene than it was from Richard Allen's weapon. Uh, the science of saying that this thing was cycled through Richard Allen's gun 
also not that reliable or not that great um, in terms of the markings on it. It could have you know, pretty gone, much gone through any gun. Um, and, and to be sitting there, that's all they have. There's no DNA. The only DNA they actually have is like someone else's hair in Libby's hand. Um, mm -hmm. are they going to be able to land this thing in terms of the prosecution getting a conviction? Do you think thus far on what we know of the evidence? Yeah, I I am really curious. It's it's one I could not call because yeah. we certainly look at other cases where the evidence is overwhelming. And I think you and I can both say 99% mm -hmm. odds that a person did it based upon what we're watching. Sure. This one isn't that way. It's, um, it's very murky, very confusing, very convoluted. If you didn't have all, all his confessions, uh, you know, it would it would certainly lean very strongly toward innocent, but we don't really have all the data yet. We yeah. don't have all the information, and I'm I'm sad that we can't all watch yeah. because I think we could learn a lot from this trial. Um, but I'm I'm very curious to see ultimately what all comes out. I know I, I hate to say it because it's taken so long to get here, and these families want justice. We're talking 2017. Um, feels to me like it could be a hung jury at some point. There's just too yeah. much back and forth. There's, there there certainly is reasonable doubt. I, I think without a doubt, there is reasonable doubt. Uh, is it enough to sway a jury completely or get everybody on one side? I don't know. I mean, we're, we're still somewhat early into this, but it's not supposed to last very long either. So mm -hmm. we'll keep our eyes on it. Hey, thanks for checking out the video. Be sure to follow us wherever you download podcasts, and especially Apple Podcasts, where you can get advanced episode and premium content on our premium channel right there. Also, be sure to follow us on social media so you don't miss any breaking updates on the stories that matter to you most. We're on TikTok, X, Instagram, Facebook. Just search Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi, and you'll find us right there. Again, thanks for watching.